Tired of coding your Discord bot for weeks and still getting zero users? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to grow your bot, even if you're starting from scratch. All right, I'm about to start a new series on Discord.js, where I'll take you from zero to advanced level. But before that, I thought I'd show you how to actually grow your Discord bot. You might be wondering, who am I to teach you this? Well, I've created and managed more than four Discord bots with millions of users, including gaming bots and moderation bots. Now, I'm not saying that watching this video will guarantee your bot's success overnight. What I will do is share what I did to grow my bots and what you should focus on to get there. So let's get started. Okay, so now let's look at what steps are involved. First of all, the things you should do and the things you shouldn't do. If you don't have a bot yet, but you wanna make one, then the first thing you need to do is think of an idea. For that, we'll follow a few steps like solving a problem. So ask yourself, what do people struggle with on Discord? Is it server management, games, productivity, or engagement? Try to see what's missing or what you can make easier. Then comes the second step, look at successful bots. For example, go to top.gg, explore what's trending and what features are missing. After that, choose a niche. I would suggest don't try to make an everything bot. Focus on one niche like gaming, music, moderation, AI, economy, etc. Then add a unique twist. Even if your idea already exists, you can still build a bot, just make it better than the existing ones. Maybe it has faster response, easier UI, UX, advanced customization, etc. And finally, step five, validate your idea. Share it with your friends on Discord or post on Reddit and ask them, would you use a bot that does this or that? This kind of feedback will help you improve your idea before you actually start building. All right, so once you have your idea, the next step is to start building the bot. But even during development, there are a few important things to keep in mind. First of all, you need a good bot handler. You can either use an existing handler made by other developers, or you can create your own from scratch. A good handler is essential because it makes your work much easier. For example, it helps manage interactions, handles events, and log smoothly and provides a cleaner structure overall. Personally, I recommend using DiscoBase, which is an advanced yet beginner-friendly handler. It offers tons of helpful features and is easy to set up. If you want to learn more about DiscoBase, I've added a video link in the description. Feel free to check it out. All right, so before we move forward, I thought, why not reach out to a successful Discord bot developer and ask them a few questions? That way, they can also share what they did to grow their bot. I got in touch with the developer of the popular Phone Guy bot. This bot is loved by many and is currently in over 18,000 servers. So, what does this bot do? With Phone Guy, you can connect with random users across Discord. Let me show you how it works. Uh, for example, if I want to talk to someone, so I just type slash call and I'll be connected to a random person. The best part is it even shows the user's name and avatar when you're connected. The bot also offers a premium subscription for some additional features, uh, which you can check out. And I've added the bot's link in the description if you'd like to try it yourself. All right, now let's hear some tips from the developer. What's up developers? Charlotte here, the second developer of Fungi. The Disco bot now is in 60,000 plus servers. Kira and I made every mistake in the book so you don't have to. Today I'm breaking down our most painful lessons, the exact strategies that actually move the needle. This is the stuff nobody talks about. Let's first discuss what are the three most critical mistakes are made by new developers. First one, the hosting nightmare. Our first big mistake, using cheap hosting. When we hit 500 servers, everything, but everything crashed during peak hours. Close dozens of servers overnight. The fix? We switched to a scalable VPS with 200 more RAM than we thought we needed. So the lesson? Overestimate your needs from day one. Second. Feature creep disaster. We wasted, we wasted months of building commands that nobody used. How? We didn't ask. Now we run polls in our Discord before writing a single line of code. Check what your community needs and create it with your own unique way. Don't try to copy others, it will not help you. People will see that and just keep your bot. 
And now that we discussed the critical mistakes that you should avoid, let's see what you need to do in order to succeed. Success doesn't come by itself. It takes hard work and time. Discipline is the magic word. If you want something big, you have to know that every day you have to work for it. At first, you won't see anything, no results, even though you do everything. And this is where most people give up. This is where you have to keep going and keep going and don't stop because success is there. It's waiting for you, whether it's in three months or two years. Creating something unique starts with rejecting the obvious. Don't ask what users want. Ask what they never think to request. True innovation emerges from constraints. Limit your tools, defy conventions, and build what others dismiss as pointless. Uniqueness isn't a feature. It's a refusal to solve problems conventionally. The best bots don't just serve needs, they create new ones. People never knew they had. Stop copying, start inventing. Promotion is the key. To promote your board effectively, focus on these basics. List, list it on bot directories like TopDG and discobotlist.com. This helps people discover it. Use social media, post updates on Twitter, Reddit, and Discord servers to allow self-promotion. Offer for invites, give rewards like special roles or commands to users who share your bot. Engage with your user fix bugs. Fix bugs quickly and add requested features to keep them happy. Good promotion doesn't need the big budget, just consistency. Look, growing a bot is brutal. It took us four months to hit 1k servers, working 24 hour days. But if you avoid these mistakes and double down on what works, you will save months of pain. Hello, my name is Kiri and I am the creator and lead coder of Fungi. I have been working on Discord bots since 2020 and I currently have three bots uploaded on TopGG. My largest bot, Fungi, is at the time of this recording in 16,000 plus servers and it is watching more than half a million users. This project started in August of 2024 and its growth is huge over those past few months. Precisely, it took the bot around 4 to 5 months to achieve its largest server count of around 15,000 servers. Starting off, I would like to clarify that the beginning is the hardest part of making a bot. The first 1 to 2,000 servers are the hardest to reach in my opinion, so be patient and persistent on gaining popularity. The site I would personally recommend to new bot developers is top.gg. The first thing you should do is make sure that your bot complies with the rules top.gg has set for bots. If you get rejected once, do not give up. I got rejected three times before Fungi was accepted. Review your mistakes, try to fix them, and apply again. When you finally manage to get your bot live on top.gg, there are two main ways to boost your bot's popularity. The first one requires a budget and I recommend it for everyone to do it at least once in order to get an easy head start. And that is to use the top.gg auctions. The auctions consist of a web page in which a person can bid for an advertisement position somewhere on the top.gg website. The most common mistake I see is people bidding on ads which have many views but few clicks. In order to get many people to invite your bot, you need clicks as views do not grant you anything, so focus on clicks when bidding for an ad spot. Also make sure to not miss the ad deadline and bid until the end, because the end is when your bids will probably get surpassed. Now if you do not want to spend money or you want to grow your bot in another way, the second best way is by gaining votes. Votes drag bots from the bottom of the tag pages all the way to the top. For example, my bot is on the top three of the bots in the user phone tag because of the votes. That means that people are way more likely to see it and invite it because of its placement. If you need votes, I would recommend to create a feature in which users are able to unlock only when they have voted. Top.gg gives you access to the users that have voted through its API, so make sure to take advantage of that. In conclusion, what you must do in order to gain popularity in servers is to start off strong by investing in advertisements and then you can either continue using them or create a feature in which users have to vote in order to unlock. Thanks for listening to me and I hope the best to new and fresh developers. Wow. 
First of all, a big thanks to Solid and Kira for taking the time to guide new developers. I hope you all listened carefully and understood their advice. All right then, let's move forward and explore some more things. So after creating your Discord bot, you also need to promote it. And yes, this is extremely important. Once your bot is ready, the first step is to add it to your own server. Announce it there and let people know about it. Next, tell your friends. Ask for their feedback, and don't be afraid of bugs or errors, even the biggest bots have bugs. What matters is that you fix those issues when users report them. Then, ask your friends to add the bot to their servers as well. Encourage them to make announcements and spread the word among their communities. That's how you start getting your first users. And along with all this, there's one more important thing. Uh, as long as your Discord bot is not verified, you can still change its name. So. Your bot's branding should look premium from the beginning. And while doing this, there are a few key things you should keep in mind. Dot first of all, your bot's name should be catchy and simple, something that sticks in people's minds and is easy to remember. Second, the logo should be clean and simple. Your bot's name and logo together, or even just one of them, should give an idea of what your bot does or what type of bot it is. After that, the banner isn't extremely important, but if you want, you can still make a good one to improve your bot's appearance. And finally, the description, it shouldn't be too long or heavy. Just keep it short and clear, but it should explain why your bot is useful so that anyone who reads it can easily understand what the bot is about. Now let's move forward and talk about how we can let people know about our bot and how to reach them. So you can do a few things. First of all, if you're good at SEO, you can create your own website where people can learn about your bot, how to use it, and the basic features. But again, your SEO should be strong so that when people search for something like TicketBot, your site appears at the top or at least somewhere near the top. And after that, whether you've created a website or not, you can still list your Discord bot on Discord bot listing websites so it's easily accessible to users who may want to invite it. These websites also help with your bot's SEO making it easier to find online. Here are some websites where you can list your bot. Top.ggg, discordbotlist.com, discords.com slash bots, voidbots.net. So you can list your bot on these platforms, but don't submit it to every single bot list out there. Just focus on the most popular and reputable ones to keep your bot looking premium and trusted. And after that, you can use your social media effectively to promote your bot. For example, you can post about your bot on Twitter and Reddit, but the best platform is YouTube. Create a YouTube channel and upload tutorials about your bot. For example, if your bot has a ticket system, verification system, or any other features, start creating tutorials like how to set up a ticket system for your Discord server. When people search on YouTube, they'll see your video, learn how to use your bot, and then invite it. And if your bot is focused on economy or gaming, you can still do the same and also make YouTube shorts to reach even more users quickly. All right, so now let's say people have added your bot. Maybe it's in 10 servers, 100 servers, or even more. So what should you do now? Or rather, what features should your bot have so it can reach even more servers? And also make sure that the people who have added it don't kick it out. First of all, your bot should have a support server where you can inform users about downtime, share upcoming updates, and have dedicated channels where people can give suggestions, report bugs, and where you can interact with users professionally. And make sure your bot doesn't stay down for too long. If any bugs appear or something needs to be fixed, do it quickly. Also, keep a separate development bot for yourself where you can test updates and fixes. And once everything is working fine, just update your main bot. Your bot's hosting should be fast and reliable. It shouldn't happen that someone invites your bot and sees it's offline or responding very slowly. If that happens, they'll likely kick the bot right away. Your bot should also have an anti-crash system so that a single command doesn't cause the entire bot to crash. Dot. And also, manage your bot's permissions properly your bot should never negatively affect someone's server. Only request the permissions that your bot actually needs in the invite link. If your bot doesn't need administrator permission, then just don't ask for it. Otherwise, users might feel uncomfortable inviting your bot.
But if your bot truly requires administrator, then you can include it. And apart from that, if your bot gets kicked after being added, the reason could also be that your bot's UI and usage are too confusing. And you may ask what I mean by that. So listen, your bot should explain by itself how to use it. For example, add the bot's prefix or help command in its status and make sure the help command UI is simple and easy to understand. After that, here's a tip. Add buttons to your bot's main commands like the help command or other frequently used ones such as user info, um, server info, etc. Don't overdo it by adding buttons everywhere. But yes, wherever it makes sense, include buttons that allow users to invite your bot easily. The benefit for you will be that if the other members in the server, like your bot, they can easily click and invite it. And yes, you can add more buttons too, maybe for your bot's documentation website so people can click and see it and thus learn more about your bot. And now, how can you make your bot's UI UX friendly so that even a newbie can use your bot and easily set up the systems? So first of all, don't make too many commands for a single system. Try to use modals, buttons, and select menus instead. Let's look at some examples. For instance, if your bot has a ticket system, then there should be only one command in your bot that sets up the entire ticket system. If more are needed, then two, three commands at most. Otherwise, just one. Now you might be confused about how we can make such a big system work with just one command. So I'll tell you, for example, when someone runs the ticket setup command, show them an embed with information about what steps they need to do and how many steps they have completed. And then you can attach buttons to that embed, for example, a button to set the channel. When they click on the set channel button, you can show them a select menu from which they can choose the channel. You can also provide a button to design the ticket panel. Once the ticket setup is complete, you can give a send panel button as well. So you can make it even better. I'm just giving you the idea. The benefit will be that the user won't have to search for commands or think about what the next step is. Your bot itself will tell them what the next step is. And even if your bot's system has multiple commands, your bot will tell the user which command to use and when to use it. For example, if someone runs the ticket setup command, you can put in the embed footer or somewhere. Note, like, if you want to disable the system, run the ticket disable command. All right, now the last thing vote rewards and other types of rewards can be very useful. For example, if your bot is on top.gg or any other bot list, they provide an API that lets you know whether a user has voted for your bot or not. So what you can do is don't make every command require a vote because that would irritate users and they might kick your bot. But for some commands that are more advanced, or if it's an economy bot, you can maybe give them some coins or extra benefits. Uh, if it's a games bot, you can give them multiplayer access, things like that. Top.gg provides an API through which you can check whether the user who ran the command has voted or not. If not, you can show an embed saying that this command requires a vote and ask them to vote first. Then once they vote, you can detect it and give them access to the rewards. The benefit of this is that your bot enters a loop. For example, a user runs a command, then they vote, and because of the vote, your bot reaches more users. Uh, those users then use the command and vote too. I hope you learned a lot from this video. And yes, if you want to learn bot development, subscribe to the channel because a complete series on discord.js is starting very soon. All right, bye-bye guys.